Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Last meeting, we were able to discuss the definition of criminal investigators and the good and ideal characteristics of a criminal investigator. So today, we will be talking about personalities in relation to criminal investigation. So we have here Jonathan Wild. He was a buckle maker and a bottle operator, a master criminal who became the London's most effective criminal investigator. He was the London's organized crime lord. So as you can see, he was a master criminal who became the London's most effective criminal investigator. To make sense, uh, of course, we know for a fact that criminals know how to evade arrest, how to be careful in such a way that they, they cannot leave evidence and they cannot get caught. So the best way to employ a criminal or to arrest a criminal, I mean, is to employ likewise a criminal. So that is Jonathan Wilde, a master criminal who became the London's most effective criminal investigator. He was the most famous thief catcher in 1720s. He conceived the idea of charging a fee for locating and returning stolen property to its rightful owners. So it is Jonathan Wilde who conceived the idea of charging service fee for tracking and returning or recovery of stolen property back to its rightful owners. And that's how he looked like. Next is Henry Fielding, an Englishman who wrote a novel entitled Tom Jones, the creator of the Bow Street Runners, which are originally called as Fielding's People. So, he created the Bow Street Runners, which are originally called as Fielding's People. So, he is uh, Henry Fielding. And his men are called the Bow Street Runners or Fielding's People. And he also wrote the novel Tom Jones. He formed a group of police officers which are attached to the Bow Street Court. So uh, we have this Bow Street Court who are not in uh, uniform. So we have this court and this Bow Street Court has a non-uniform police officers performing criminal investigative functions. So that is Henry Fielding, the creator of Bow Street Runners, which was called Fielding's People the author of the novel Tom Jones and he formed a group of police officers attached to the Bow Street Court. Parang pareho lang din to sa uh, courts natin sa Pilipinas. Kung meron tayong family, a WCPD investigator, 
we know for a fact that the w, WCPD investigator caters family related cases. So, pagka ipafile naman na ng WCPD investigator yung case na handle niya, sa ang court niya ipafile, it will be filed with the family court. So, meron din tayong family court. So, fam family case filed with the family court. Same is true with the uh, special court din to. Another, another special court, the drugs court. Meron tayong investigator ng about illegal drugs. Tapos, da, saan din saan din pinafile at rinatrial doon din siya sa drugs court so we have the Bow Street Runners saan din pinafile yung kaso nila sa Bow Street Court according to Henry Fielding he stated the quote and I read he that can Heroically endure adversity will bear prosperity with equal greatness of soul. For the mind that cannot be dejected by the former is not likely to be transported with the latter. So, after Henry Fielding, we have here the younger, bar the younger brother. John Fielding, who took over the control of the Bow Street Court in 1753. So, he took control of the Bow Street Court in 1753, and in spite of being blind, he guided the runners to become effective. So, he also introduced the practice of developing informants, printing wanted notices, employing criminal raids, and bearing firearms and handcuffs. So, it is John Fielding who introduced the development of informants. Printing of wanted notices, ito yung mga pinapalkat sa mga poste, noon, wanted, tapos reward, employing criminal raids, and bearing firearms and handcuffs. So, John Fielding, blind, and he took over the Bow Street Court. Next is Patrick Colcohun, a former London president who proposed the creation of a preventive police force called Thames River Police. His proposal was considered too radical <coughs> and was dismissed by the Royal Court of London. Uh, by the way, when we say preventive police force, their task is to secure boundaries. Kumbaga, pre-prevent -pre nila na may outsider na papasok sa boundary nila, dun sa Thames River. Kumbaga, binabantayan nila para walang unauthorized Foreign, uh, foreigner to enter their place para walang makapagpuslit ayan, walang makapagsmagal and other related cases, walang makatakas kung meron man and we have here the famous Mr. Robert Peel the founder of London Metropolitan Police he is the father of modern policy. He introduced the following techniques 
detectives concealing themselves. So when we say detective concealing themselves, they are in plain clothes. They secretly photograph and record conversations. So this is more of a surveillance activity. They photograph, record conversation, and conceal themselves. Next is Eugene Francois Veduc. He established a squad of ex-convicts to aid the Paris police in investigating crimes. He worked under the theory of set a thief to catch a thief. So, pareho rin siya doon sa theory ni, sa concept ni Jonathan Wilde, di ba? Si Jonathan Wilde is the master criminal who became London's greatest investigator. Kay Eugene Francois Widuk naman, he worked under the theory of set a thief to catch a thief. So in order for the government to catch a thief, they employ a thief. And Eugene Viduc is also the founder of La Sorete National. We have here Dr. Hans Gross, the, ad, uh, the earliest advocate of criminal investigation as a science. He coined the term criminalistics. Thus, he was called the father of criminalistics. He wrote the book entitled System Their Criminalistics or System of criminalistics. Hans Gross, the father of criminalistics. Next is Charles Dickens. He wrote the novel entitled Bleak House. He introduced the term detective to the English language. So, Detective was introduced into the English language by Charles Dickens. And according to him, the most important thing in life is to stop saying I wish and start saying I will. So instead, of just wishing, we shall act. Instead of just planning, we shall do and perform. We have here Alan Pinkerton. He was America's foremost private detective. So when we say private detective, he is not with the government. He is not working with the government. This individual truly deserves the title of America's founder of criminal investigation. So just like when we say private detective, just like the private security agency, right? They are not owned by the government. They are owned by a private entity. Among methods pioneered were shadowing. So, an intelligence work, shadowing, following the shadow of your subject without getting caught, the art of suspect surveillance, and roping, work in undercover capacity, and they have the motto, 
we never sleep. Alan Pinkerton is the founder of Pinkerton Detective Agency in the USA. We never sleep. We have here the first lady, Kate Warren, America's first female detective and spy. So what is the difference between detective and a spy? Detective is one that is assigned to uh, like follow and detect some Pwede rin kasama, sa, kasama ng criminal acts and to detect also a spy. And a spy, on the other hand, are agents whom the government authorize to uh, surveil on a foreign uh, certain foreign target pwede yan or certain pwede rin naman na local person na target she was part of Pinkerton team that uncovered a plot to assassinate President Abraham Lincoln on his way through Baltimore to Washington. So it was Kate Warren who discovered that the uh, death of Abraham Lincoln on his way through Baltimore to Washington was planned. Yan. Assassination. Planned assassination. Kate Warren is under the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Next is Thomas Beams. He built up a book of criminals which he called Rogue's Gallery in 1886. Up to present, we also have here we retain this rogue gallery hanggang ngayon. Meron pa rin yan. Ang tawag dyan, pagka yung nasa printed uh, pictures, is we call it magshot. Pero, nowadays, ina-upload yan sa e ang tawag dito? Iwaran, irog, sa irog pala. Ina-upload na yung mga pictures ng mga arrested persons sa irog ng PNP. So, irog system. Yun yung electronic room gallery. Thomas Burns introduced the modus operandi file. So, what is modus, modus operandi file? This are the sets of uh, operations conducted by criminal kung paano nila isinasagawa ang isang krimen. One example of a modus operandi is the pagka sa theft cases is the laglag barya, di ba? May ginagawa ka tapos biglang may naglaglag ng barya sa tabi mo. Tapos pagpupulutin mo na yung barya, syempre mawawala sa mata mo yung nakalagay sa table sa table mo, ma wallet or cellphone. So the mere fact na nawala yung attention mo sa nakalagay dun sa table mo, pagangat mo, hindi mo ma mamala, namamalayan, later mo marirealize na wala na pala yung wallet mo o kaya yung cellphone mo na nakalagay sa top ng table. 
So that's one example of a modus operandi. And we also have Akyat Bahay, Asitilin Gang, and many more. Bukas Kotche. We have here Arthur Conan Doyle, a novelist, a writer who popularized scientific criminal investigation by creating a fictional detective. So, fictional, hindi siya tunay na detective. Parang comics lang, fictional detective, which he named Sherlock Holmes and his friend Watson. So, Sherlock Holmes is a fictional detective created by novelist Arthur Conan Doyle. And John Edgar Hoover, he became the head of the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which was established by the Attorney General from 1909 to 1924. And who is the father of personal identification? We have here Alphonse Bertillon. He introduced the first scientific identification system used by the police and this scientific identification system is called anthropometry or the measurement of or the body measurement yan through the body measurement pagka may napulot tayong skull there is a system of how we can predict kung ano yung height ng namatay. So, that's uh, one help of the anthropometry. So, lahat ng body parts minimeasure. And in relation to Alphonse Bertillon, we have here the Twin Brother West case, wherein it is Will West who committed a crime, but it was William West who was arrested by the police. So Bertillon system was used in identifying the suspect. Will and William are identical twins of almost the same height, weight, complexion, body build, and so on and so forth, and of thinking capacity. Thus, uh, this is the type of scenario wherein Alphonse Bertillon's system cannot be accurate in identifying a person. So, who did the crime? It was Will West, who was arrested by the law enforcement agency. It was William West. So, saan sila ngayon magkakaroon ng difference? Dito sa fingerprint identification. Doon makikita yung difference nila. Now, we have here a supposed quiz. Uh, siguro, isasama ko na lang to sa quiz nyo.
Kaya natin magsurot ng isa. It is the ability to analyze logically a multitude of facts and determine how they interrelate. So, is it critical thinking, faulty reasoning, imagination and curiosity, or superior reasoning ability? So let us resume with the cardinal points of criminal investigation. So when we say cardinal points of criminal investigation, it is the most important point in criminal investigation. The five W's and one H. So we have here the basic steps in criminal investigation. First is we have to recognize, collect, preserve, evaluate, and present. So, recognition involves the efforts of identifying data, including physical things that may provide relevant information regarding the criminal case being investigated. Or, in other words, recognition of pieces of evidence. Collection refers to the act of gathering those identified data or facts or physical things that are significant to the case under investigation. Or in short, collection of evidence. And next is the preservation, which includes the act of keeping the collected evidence in the true and original form. So we shall prevent the evidence from contamination, alteration, destruction, and so on and so forth. That is what we call preservation. Followed by evaluation, the process of determining the probative value of the evidence. So what is the probative value of the evidence? How accurate and how important is that evidence? What does it prove? And next is presentation. It is the function that is primarily manifested inside the court room. So, when you say presentation, it is now the presentation of evidence during trial. So, what are the starting point of criminal investigation? One is, just like research lang po, the process of research. What is the problem? So, stating the problem. And from that problem, form a hypothesis or yung suspecha mo. Ano kayo nangyari? Sino kaya ang gumawa? Mga ganyan, depende sa scenario. Observe and experiment. Interpret data. And after the interpretation of data, 
we have to draw conclusion that answers our problem. So what is the golden rule in criminal investigation? Our golden rule in criminal investigation is to never ever touch, move, alter, or transfer any object at the crime scene unless it has been properly first photographed, second sketched, third marked, fourth measured, and fifth properly packaged and sealed. So, na, bawal. Upon the, uh, when responding to a crime scene, the investigator shall never, ever touch, move, alter, or transfer any object from the crime scene, not unless the evidence and the crime scene has been properly photographed, sketched, marked, measured, and packaged. So we have here the three eyes of investigation, information, and followed by interview or interrogation, and followed by instrumentation. So first is information. It is the knowledge of facts which the investigator had gathered or acquired from persons or documents which are pertinent or relevant concerning the commission of the crime or criminal activities. So, highlighted are the keywords that relates to information for your easy understanding. Information pertains to the knowledge of facts which are gathered or acquired in relation to criminal case or the criminal offender and other information or details they related to the crime. So we have here three sources of information. We have the regular sources. This are records, files from the government or non-government agencies and to include news items being telecasted or broadcasted. So those are the regular sources. Cultivated sources are information furnished by informants or informers. So these are all information that came from informants or informers. That's why we call it cultivated sources. And the grapevine sources. When the information is disclosed by the underworld characters such as prisoners, ex-cons, or even organized syndicate, these are called grapevine sources. And according to Sherlock Holmes, data, data, data. I cannot make weeks without a claim. So I cannot investigate, I cannot conclude without data. Nothing matters but the facts. Without them, the science of criminal investigation is nothing more than a guessing game. So this is true. In investigation, without facts, without evidence, and without witnesses, criminal investigation is nothing than a what? Guessing game. 
Parang suspect siya na lahat. Siguro siya ang gumawa, siya ang gumawa. So, we know for a fact na pagkasuspect siya lang yan, ang kailangan sa criminal case is proof beyond reasonable doubt. So, kung alanganin yan, means to say, madidismiss ka agad yung kaso mo. Dapat, ang proof beyond reasonable doubt kasi means to say, there is no doubt that the person who was arrested was actually the person who committed the crime. Parang ganyan kasi ang uh, gusto ng probable cause. Uh, I mean, proof beyond reasonable doubt. So, kung uh, suspect siya lang, ay hindi, hindi, magsas- hindi magsasaksi ang kaso natin. So, what is the difference between information, uh, between informant and informer? So, who is paid and who is not? Informant, any person who furnishes the police information relevant to a criminal case about the activities of criminals or syndicates without any monetary consideration. So, that is the definition of an informant. He is a free agent. He doesn't receive any reward in exchange of the information he is giving. While informer, on the other hand, is a person who provides information to the police on a regular basis in consideration of the price, reward, or money. So, meron siyang kapalit. Lahat ng mga information na binabato niya ay merong kabayaran. That is the informer. See that dude in your local anarchist meeting? That weird guy at the mosque? Well, he might be an informant. Part of the big bad surveillance machine is a big network of informants. And they're charged with one simple task. Get information on groups and people that the government doesn't really trust. And since 9-11, the American informant network has grown into its own industry. In 1975, there were 1,500 paid FBI informants. And in 1980, 2,800. But in 2011, over 15,000. Informants often also target minority communities, especially the Muslims. Almost half of terrorism-related prosecutions between 2001 and 2011 involved the use of a paid informant. And informants also often have a criminal past, which is actually used to give them the choice between either going to prison or, well, becoming an informant. And the right choice can pay. Informants can make up to $100,000 for providing good information. How's that for the informant industry? So, informer and informant. So, informant again is a giver of information without pay. Informer gives information with pay, reward, monetary consideration. Yeah, that's the way it. And we have here the types of informant. So we have, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> we have, <laughs> we have the anonymous informant. These are informants who give information through telephone, with the hope that the informant cannot be identified. Anonymous phone caller, letter writer, or text sender. In the PNP, we have a lot of informant. Kasi ang dali-dali lang bumili ng cellphone. Tapos, uh, mag-text 2920. Hindi natin makikilala kung sino yung nag-text. Ang dami niyang sinusumbong. Yan, anonymous informant. He hopes, he gives information, and at the same time, he hopes that he cannot be identified by the police. So, anonymous informant and confidential informant. This is similar with the former, 
similar with the anonymous info, the informant. But he gives information on violations of the law to include crimes and criminals. So that is now the difference. Confidential informants are also informants who reports information through phone and they doesn't want to be identified. However, the, re the report he gives to the police are information on violations of law to include crimes and criminals. So that is our confidential informant. And next is the voluntary informant, a type of informant who gives information freely and willfully as a witness to a certain act. So informant is an agent who gives information for free, right? Pagka dinagdagan natin ng voluntary informant, so he gives information for free na nga, he is also willing to be a witness to a certain act. So, hanggang, uh, hanggang mag-testify siya, willing siya. That is our voluntary informant. So, a man testifying during trial. Pointing at the uh, wedding suspect. And we also have this uh, rival elimination informant. This kind mostly maintains being Anonymous. So, anonymous informant din siya. However, his purpose of reporting or giving an information is to eliminate the rival person or gang due to competition or other motives such as revenge and so on and so forth. So, rival elimination informant. One example of this rival elimination informant is a store owner. Let's say for example, itong store owner na to is siya yung pinakaunang store dun sa isang locality. Tapos, uh, may biglang nagpatayo na store dun sa tabi niya. Ngayon, nung may biglang nagpatayo na store dun sa tabi niya, lahat ng mga dating customer nung uh, old store owner ay lumipat dun sa bagong store. So, nagkandak ng uh, marites marites at investigation tong old store owner about yung about yung sa bagong nagpatay ng store niya and nalaman niya na wala pa lang permit yung uh, new store owner so ni-report niya itong new store owner sa uh, local government in charge with permits kasi a violation yon operating business without a valid permit. Yan ang violation niya. So that is one example of a rival elimination informant. Kumbaga, maagawan pa si siya, kaya may report yung kakompetisyon niya. So rival elimination informant. He wants his rival to be eliminated. And we have here the false informant usually reveals information of no consequence, no value, no stuff, or uh, connected with thin air. So, means to say, napakanipis na hangin. Walang kwenta yung mga pinagre-report niya. Walang sense. Walang value. Tapos, hindi pa totoo. False informant. And the frightened informant, he is prodded by fear or self-interest in giving information to the police. He may be one of the lesser gang members who runs to the police when his gang mates are about to be involved in a dangerous situation or when the gang he belongs is hot on the police trail. So frightened informant, when you say frightened, nagulat and at the same time, natakot. So, ano ang gagawin mo pagka nagulat ka at natakot? Lalo na kung dun sa gang nyo, eh, ikaw parati ang 
may pinakamalaki ang risk tapos ikaw pa ang pinakamaliit ang porsyento. <laughs> okay. So yan. Uh, baka malapit na kami mahuli ng mga polis. So, kaysa mahuli ng polis, uunahan na niya, magsusurrender na siya. Parang plea to a lesser offense na ang gagawin niya. Mas sumagaan ang penalty niya compared with the others. And next is the self-aggrandizing informant. This kind of informant moves around the center of criminals, group, or syndicate, and delights in surprising the police about bits of information. So, yan. Nakaka-ikot-ikot siya sa mga grupo ng criminal, sa mga syndicate, tapos bigla na lang napupunta sa police station, tapos nagbibigay ng information about the uh, police. Yeah, about the criminals to the police. So, yan. Para magpapakitang bilas siya sa police. Self-aggrandizing informant. Meron din yung mga ganyan. Self-aggrandizing informant. Mercenary informant. The informant has information for sale. So, meron siyang information for sale. We call him mercenary informant. He may have been victimized in a double cost or little share in the loot or given a dirt deal and seeks revenge as well. Parang spelling to as well. Dapat yan. As profit in his disclosure. So, the main point here is he has an information for sale and we don't know why he sales information so probably he was victimized in a double cross so when we say double cross meron siyang nakatim na provider sa kanya or little share in the loot so yun nagnakaw sila tapos siya yung may pinakamalit na share kaya para makabawi Ibibintali niya yung information about the criminal group. So, medyo a little bit uh, related siya with the with the what? Yan. Frightened informant. Pwede. However, the main difference is the, fright, the frightened informant is padded by fear or self-interest. Pero dito, sa mercenary informant, he gives information for same. And the double-crosser informant, he uses his seeming desire to divulge information as an excuse to talk to the police in order to get more information from them more than he gives. So that is our double closer informant. One example for this is parang pupunta siya sa police office sa police, mag-a-act siya as an, an, an uh, hindi, mag siya as a self-aggrandizing informant. Parang, oh, marami akong information na UBS sa inyo about this criminal group. Ganyan. Pero pagkatapos niya magsabi ng information, magtatanong siya. Pero marami pa akong gustong malaman para mas ma-identify ko kung sino kaya pa yung mga kasamahan nila. Ganun. So, siya naman ngayon ang manghingi ng information sa polis. Malamang mas malaki pa yung mahukwa ng information, tapos sa kanya ulit ibibinta naman sa kabila. Double crosser informant. And we have here women informant. She may be female associate of the criminals who was roughed up, marginalized, uh, marginalized in the deals, parang nilimitahan yung uh, participation o kaya yung kita niya sa deal. 
So, kaya, uh, nilimit. So, yun na, nilimitahan. Marginalized. For being eased out from the group. O baka pinapatansik na sa grupo. So, women in four months. So, tapusin na natin yung three eyes. We have here the second eye, interview and interrogation. So, we have here a pre-interrogation checklist. Many, inv uh, many investigators find it useful to complete a pre-interrogation checklist to assist them adequately in preparing for the meeting with the suspect. So, have do you have these facts regarding the crime? Meron pa lang information about itong sumusunod in relation to the crime. First is the legal description of the of the bucket defense offense, the value or nature of the loss, magkano yung nawala, magkano yung nasira, time date, place of occurrence, kailan nag na nagawa, description of the crime scene and surrounding area, madilim ba yung crime scene, wala bang katao-tao, puno ba ng CCTV, siksikan ba yung mga tao, Physical evidence collected, may mga illegal drugs ba, may contraband, may weapon. Ano yung weather condition during the time of offense? Kasi pagka maulan yan, tapos uh, outdoors yung crime, probably may ma-wash out sa mga evidence. Lalo na pagka mga, may blood stain doon, may fingerprint, may shoe print. Umulan, naku po. Sayang yung evidence. Tapos kung moist yung evidence, uh, kung sobrang init naman, mabilis na mag-evaporate yung moist. So, specific entry or exit points of the perpetrator, saan kaya siya pumasok at saan siya lumabas approach and departure routes of the perpetrator saan siya nanggaling at siya, saan siya nagtungo after ng crime methods of travel to and from the scene kung paano siya pumunta sa crime scene nagbisikleta ba at kung paano siya umalis sa crime scene nakakotse na umalis the modus operandi of the perpetrator so ano yung modus operandi niya The tools or weapons used, gumamit ba siya ng bolt cutter? O gumamit ba siya ng nakakahilong handkerchief para makatulog yung mga tao doon? Chloroform. Names of persons having knowledge. So, sino kaya yung mga possible victim natin and witnesses na may kaalaman about the crime? Possible motive. So, what is the motive in this incident? Ano kaya motibo ng criminal kung bakit niya ginawa ito? Paghiganti. Yan. Personal gains. A details from other case, uh, case files that point to a particular suspect. So, pattern. Meron kayang pattern na pwedeng mag-link Meron bang same incident before na pareho sa pangyayari ngayon na pwede makapagturo sa suspect? Show matching modi ay modus operandi. May pareho bang modus operandi na naganap mo? And suggest a pattern of criminality. So, yan. Pattern. What? Uh, we have here related terms. Suspect and a witness. Suspect pertains to a person whose guilt is considered on reasonable ground to be a practical possibility. So, the keyword here is whose guilt is considered on a reasonable ground. So, suspect my possibility na he is the guilty party. While witness uh, requested to give information concerning the incident. So, witness is a person who was requested to give information about the incident. 
So interview is the simple questioning of a person. So question, simple questioning of a person believed to possess information which are relevant to the investigation of a crime or on criminal activities. So simple questioning, interview. We have here cognitive interview. Witness are given the full opportunity to narrate the accounts without intervention, interaction, and interference from the interviewer. So when we say cognitive interview, you just let the witness remind whatever he has witnessed and write it all in chronological order. Yan. So cognitive interview. Kung ano yung naalala ng witness, ipasulat mo lahat sa kanya. Question and answer interview. After each question by investigator, the interview is required to answer on what he knows about what is being asked. So, it's a young interview tip. We have here qualities of a good interviewer. Rapport. So, dapat meron siyang rapport. It is uh, the relation between the interviewer and the interviewee, which is conducive to a fruitful result. So, dapat uh, first na magkita pa lang yung investigator at yung interviewee is meron ng uh, maka-establish ng rapport yung investigator para mas the more na mag-open yung interviewee ng information. So, forceful personality. He must be understanding sympathetic and without showing official arrogance, vulgarity of expressions, and a superiority. Yan. So, he must be understanding and without vulgarity of expression. Hindi nagmumura. So, the, the conversational tone of voice must be uh, nga, conversational, not confrontational. When we say conversational, parang nakikwento lang kayo as a friend. Parang a friend. Yan lang, parang magkaibigan lang kayo. While in confrontal, parang pinapakita mo, when we say confrontal kasi is pinapakita mo na mas superior ka sa kesa sa subject mo or sa interview mo. So, yun ang difference ng confrontational sa conversational. So, the tone of voice must be conversational during interviews. Knowledge of human behavior. He must go down and up to the level of understanding on his part particular subject. Yan. So, going down with the level of the interviewee and going up then kung high standard or high status din yung subject. So, just like the quality of investigators, interrogators or interviewers shall also have these acting qualities. He must possess the qualities of an actor, salesman, and psychologist. Dapat may logic din yung pag-analyze niya kung para ma-reflect niya kung nagsisinungaling ba yung subject niya o hindi. And know how to use power of persuasion. So, dapat he has the power of persuasion na sige na, mag-operate ka na. Ganyan. Mag-open ka pa. Ganyan. Humility. He must be cautious, sympathetic, and humble. Ready to ask apologies for the inconvenience of the interview. So, humble, humility. Never conduct or let anyone conduct an interview if the inter interviewer has not gone to the crime scene. So, this is the golden rule in interview. Just like the cardinal rule in investigation, di ba? So, never touch, move, alter, 
any evidence unless it is properly photographed, sketched, marked, documented, and packaged. So, yan yung uh, cardinal ng criminal investigation, di ba? Cardinal rule. We also have here golden rule in interview, which states that the interviewer or never assign an interviewer who has not gone yet to the crime scene. Yan, one way of saying it. Never conduct or let anyone conduct an interview if the interviewer has not gone to the crime scene. So, dapat bago mag-interview yung interviewer, dapat nakapunta sa crime scene, makita niyo yung crime scene mismo. Para accurate niyo yung kanya mga tanong, straight to the point. We have here stages in handling interview. First is preparation. So, after preparation, the approach and the warming up questions and followed by cognitive interview. So, what is under the preparation? The investigator review the facts of the crime scene and information from other sources. So, that is under preparation. I-review niya kung ano yung mga available, ano yung mga evidence na nakuha sa crime scene. Saan nakalagay yung mga evidence, saan nakita, saan kaya yung possible na entry at exit point ng perpetrator, yan. And uh, followed by the approach, the investigator select his kind of approach. Oops. Thank you, Mrs. Ridgeborn. He'll be back in a while. Welcome. Sorry. I hope he doesn't keep me waiting too long. No, I don't think he will. Good day, ma'am. Is this Dr. Cleveland's office? Yes, it is. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. We need to speak to Dr. Cleveland. Is he in? Oh, I'm sorry. He's been called away to the hospital on an emergency. I'm Louise Tanner, his office manager. Can I help you with something? Well, ma'am, we're investigating a case of health care fraud, and we really do need to speak to the doctor. Wait a minute. Is Dr. Cleveland in some kind of trouble? Are you guys police officers? Well, not exactly. We're from the IG's office. IG? What's that? I'm sorry. From the Office of the Inspector General. And no, Dr. Cleveland is not in any kind of trouble as far as we know, but we do need to speak to him anyway. Health care fraud? Did you say health care fraud? No way. I do all the paperwork around here, and there's no health care fraud here. Ma'am, will you please just calm down for a minute? Now, we need to talk to the doctor because he may have information that is crucial to our investigation. Well, let me tell you, Dr. Cleveland would never have anything to do with fraud. I mean, he's a good man, officer. I've been with him for 14 years, and I can tell you he's no criminal. No, ma'am. No one is accusing him of anything. However, we do have evidence of a connection between a DME and this office, and we're here to find out more about that. Well, he's at the hospital. I told you. He's in the middle of surgery, and I don't know when he'll be back. Yes, ma'am. Well, we can wait. But as long as we're here, maybe we could have a look at some of your records. Uh, specifically, we need to review copies of the CMNs that Dr. Cleveland has completed. That should keep us busy until he returns. I don't have the authority to let you do that. So unless you have a warrant or something, your best bet is to come back tomorrow morning. Our doors are open at 8. Yes, ma'am. Sorry to have troubled you. Please tell Dr. Cleveland we will be back tomorrow morning. Not a very productive interview, was it? Our officers didn't get the information they were looking for in their investigation and in the process may have damaged the physician's reputation and practice. Tell Dr. Cleveland, I'm sorry, but that kind of trouble is just too scary for no, me. No, 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 Miss Ridgeborn, I can assure you this is no, all a mistake. No, Miss Tanner, I'll just have my new doctor call for my records. That was 30 minutes wasted. And so they're leaving empty-handed, which is unfortunate, because more likely than not have they conducted their interview properly, utilizing the five general stages of an effective law enforcement interview, it may have turned out to be much more productive. In this program, we will review those five general stages and discuss how they can be administered in the context of an effective law enforcement interview.
five general stages of an effective law enforcement interview are the introduction, rapport, the questioning phase, the summary, and the close. Let's take a look at each one of these stages individually. Thank you, Mrs. Ridgeborn. We'll be back in a while. You're welcome. I hope he doesn't keep me waiting too long. No, I don't think he will. Good day, ma'am. Is this Dr. Cleveland's office? Yes, it is. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. We're from the Health and Human Services Office of the Inspector General. I'm Special Agent Lisa Bowman, and this is Special Agent Don Grady. Hi. Oh, my. Is there something wrong? Oh, no, ma'am. Nothing to worry about. Is Dr. Cleveland in? No, I'm sorry. He's been called away to the hospital on an emergency. My name is Louise Tanner. I'm his office manager. Maybe I can help. Are you sure there's nothing wrong? Oh, yes, ma'am. Everything is fine. We just need to see if Dr. Cleveland can help us with some information regarding an investigation we're working on. In the introduction stage, you should show proper credentials and identify yourself and your partner if you have one. Also, find out who you're talking to. You should state the reason for the interview, whether it's the actual purpose or a cover story you're using at the time. Stay with the truth when you can. Oh, well, like I said, he's at the hospital, but maybe I can help. Oh, well, yes, ma'am, perhaps you can. would appreciate that. Is that your son? Yes, it is. That's my David. <laughs> he looks like a natural with that soccer ball. Does he play in the summer league out at the park? Yes, he does. He's first string forward on the Barons. I have a daughter who plays for the Cardinals. Oh, She's yeah. only been playing for a year now, but oh, she loves it. Do you go to the games? <laughs> Every one of them. I even try to make the practices. I mean, David really is something special on the field. <laughs> well, you know, I'm surprised we haven't run into each other out there. I'll have to look you up next time. <laughs> Establishing rapport is your next task. This can be accomplished in many ways, depending on the interviewee and the circumstances. Being friendly is the best policy. Talk about everyday topics, perhaps something of apparent interest to your subject. Ensure he or she is relaxed before moving on to the questioning stage. Miss Tanner, I was wondering if you could help us out with something. We have information that indicates that Dr. Cleveland has completed several certificates of medical necessity for his patients and that many of these CMNs were subsequently filled by a durable medical equipments company called Medico. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, sure, we deal with them. They're a Medicare-approved DME. Why, have we done something wrong? Oh, no, ma'am, I'm sure you haven't. But we need to uh, find out as much as we can about the quality of the products that Medico has provided to Dr. Cleveland's patients. Has uh, the doctor ever received any complaints regarding the wheelchairs or other medical equipment this company has provided? No, not that I'm aware of. I, I handle all the doctor's day-to-day -day operations, so he would have told me if there was a problem. Dr. Cleveland is very particular about making sure his patients receive what they need, and I'm sure if there was any problem with Medico's product, he would have stopped doing business with them and would have called Medicare immediately. What is it that Medico has done? The doctor isn't in any kind of trouble, is he? No, ma'am. Nobody is in any trouble here. This could have happened without you and the doctor even knowing about it. Now, when was the last time a medical representative came by here? Oh, I don't know. Um, two or three weeks ago. When he was here, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Out of the ordinary? Um, no. I see so many company reps, I can't remember anything in particular. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You did say that you handle all the day-to-day -day operations, though, right? Yes, I do. Could that also include CMNs? Yes, it does. Um, in fact, I keep copies of them in Dr. Cleveland's office. Do you want to take a look at them? Oh, yes, ma'am. That would be very helpful. You know, now that I think of it, that name Medico has come up quite a bit recently. You know what I can do if you want? I can get the company rep's name and number and then pull copies of our CMNs that Medico has filled. Anything you can do for us, Miss Tanner, we would really appreciate it. Well, look, why don't you just come around here and we can look at the files together. Terrific. The next stage of your interview is the questioning stage. Begin with general questions oh, and back. then narrow in on the specific answers you're looking for. Remember, in most cases, you are asking for information. So keep your conversation friendly if possible, and be careful to maintain rapport with your subject. If you should find yourself losing rapport, work to reestablish it. A friendly interview will almost always yield more information. 
Well, thanks for your help, Miss Tanner. The information you gave us will really help with our investigation. Oh, no trouble at all. Are you sure that's all you need? Yes, for now. We'll be back Monday to see if Dr. Cleveland has anything else he can add. But um, you've given us enough information to keep us busy until then. Well, Miss Tanner, I'd just like to review what we've covered today. Mm -hmm. Now, you say that Dr. Cleveland has been dealing with a Charles Fredrickson of Medico DME for approximately 18 months? Yes, that's correct. And that Medico's main office is located at 402 Water Street in Miami, Florida? Yes. Now, let's see. The doctor has completed 32 CMNs in the past six months. And in that time, 19 patients have dealt with Medico. And of that number, now according to these records, five of them had complaints about the equipment. Now, there may be more that the doctor is dealing with now that are not in these records. You'll have to ask him about those. Mm -hmm. The fourth stage of your interview is the summary. It's a good idea to go over all the information you've gained with your subject. This will not only ensure you have all your facts right, but will also give your subject a chance to add new information or clarify something he or she may have already stated. Well, I think we have everything we need. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. This is really going to help. Yes, sure. thank you. We're done for now, but take my card, and if you think of anything between now and Monday, just give me a call. I'll be glad to hear from you. Sure, I'll do that. And look, as far as Monday goes, our doors are open at 8, but Dr. Cleveland is always here by 7. So if you're up and about that early, you'll be sure to catch him then. We'll do that, Ms. Tanner, and thanks again for your help. You've really made our job easier on this one. <laughs> sure, no problem. The final stage of the interview is the close. Keep it friendly and leave the door open for further interviews. Make sure you leave your business card and telephone number and discuss how and when you can contact them if the need arises. As you can see, this time our agents had a much more successful interview. They obtained the information they needed, kept the door open for further contact, and maintained a cooperative spirit with their subject. They were able to do so by following the five general stages of a proper law enforcement interview. Remember them. At the beginning of every interview, introduce and identify yourself properly, making sure you clearly state your purpose for being there. Next, establish rapport between yourself and the subject. Then, while maintaining that rapport, gather the information you need by questioning the subject. Summarize with your subject all the information you have collected, and then close on a friendly note, keeping the door open for further interview sessions. Okay, guys. And if you have observed, the interviewers were much more successful in acquiring information from the interviewee the second time around because of the application of the five guides. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we spent too much time on this uh, lecture, but anyways, it's uh, of all okay, para at least may advance sa tayo. Para kung sakali mang may araw na wala kayong pasok dyan, at least advance tayo. So, anyways, this can be watched on your free time. So, so long as wala kang ginagawa, pwede nyo panoorin to. And, this will be all. See you on Thursday. Thank you very much.